Let death come upon them and let them be down to hell alive, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. I call to God and the Lord heard me evening and morning, and at noon I will pray and cry aloud and he will hear my voice. He has delivered my soul and peace from those who oppose me, for they were meant to be God will hear and humble them, even he who works before the ages, because they have not feared God, there is no change in them. He has stretched forth his hand in vengeance, they have smiled and covenant, and they were scattered by the wrath of his mouth, and their hearts were hardened. Their words were smoother than oil, and yet they are arrows. Cast your sorrows on the Lord, and he will sustain you. You will never commit the righteous to be shaken, because you, O God, will bring them down to the destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not stop past your days, by the Lord will hold in you. He who dwells under the protection of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He will say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, and my God is whom I will hold. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from troubling words. With his feathers he will overshadow you, and under his feet you will have hope. As with his shield is true, for I'm coming with you. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor that which walks in darkness, neither the pestilence, nor the demon of your day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand may be right past, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my hope, and you have established a most highest your habitation. Evil shall not come near you, and those purge come near your habitation. Deliver me, O Lord, from the dumbness and the silence of sin. And my mouth will show forth your praise. For you will give his name to charge you to keep your keep all your ways. On your hand, you will bear your blessing against his throne. You will tread upon the life of the Adam, the lion, the dragon, you will trample on your foot. Because he has set his hope upon me, I will deliver him, I will protect him, and I will protect him. Because he has set his hope upon me, I will deliver him, I will protect him, and I will protect him. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him, and I will give him instruction. I will give him the glory of my hands. The long life I will satisfy him, and the hope of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, God, ever, God, to ages, of ages, of them. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God, 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 alleluia, let your everlasting light shine also upon us sinners, through the intercession and the mercy of our Father, giver of life, glory to you. Now and ever, in those two ages and ages, Amen. As we have no witness because of the multitude of the virgins of the and you see with him who was born of you, so much more the supplications of a mother aided to find the master to find hardness. Despite the fact that we consider it a pure one, for you, Christ, have been suffered for us, merciful and strong to save. As you come to mercy swiftly, go before us, as we have become exceeding before. All those of God, our Savior, and the Lord, the glory of your name, deliver us and cleanse us from our sins for your name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and more than mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and more than mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy and more than mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, cleanse us from our sins and cleanse us from our transgressions. The Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We must this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but in the world to come to one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. You are transfigured upon the mount of Christ our God, revealing your glory to your disciples as much as they were able to bear, so that when they saw you crucified, they would know it voluntary, and will proclaim to the ends of the earth that you are the light of the Father. Lord, mercy, 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 Lord, mercy,
suffering, deep to compassion, and to great and merciful. Who loves the just and shows mercy upon the sinner. Who calls on men to salvation through the promise of blessings to God. Accept, O Lord, our prayers at this hour and direct our lives according to your commandments. Cleanse our souls, cleanse our bodies, order our minds, purify our thoughts, and deliver us from all such evil that binds them. Help us as about from your holy angels that guarded and guided by the we may receive your faith and the knowledge of your unapproachable glory and your blessing unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious be your compare than the seraphim. Without defilement, you gave birth to God the Lord, you gave birth to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord, in the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. O God, the Lord of truth, compassion, and our creation, and the Lord of impossible, send your mercy, send the young and first begotten Son of the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of our kind, and through his precious cross, towards the hand rising of our sins, thereby trampling over the principalities and powers of darkness. O Master and Lover of mankind, accept these prayers of thanksgiving and supplication from us sinners, and deliver us from every deadly and dark transgression from all visible and invisible enemies who have sought to do us harm. Nail our flesh with the fear of being led from our hearts and minds to the words or thoughts, but wound our souls to your love, so that ever be in the body, guided by your light and behold of you, the eternal light that no man can approach, we may send up unceasing praises and thanks to you. The Father without beginning, together with your only begotten Son, with your all holy, good, and light, and the Spirit. O Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, you are everywhere and you fill all things. Treasury of good things and giver of life, come, abide in us, cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O good one. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will among men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will show forth your praise. Lord, cleanse me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. It is time for the Lord to act. Bless us, our God, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Forgive me, mothers and sisters. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace from above, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. for the union of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who are in love and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our metropolitan chief and our Archbishop Nathaniel, for the honorable presbytery, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this country, for its president, those in civil authority and its armed forces. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our friend, this mother Christophora, for the sisterhood of this monastery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this monastery, for this city, for every city and country, for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and keep us, O God, 
God is worthy to serve you in holiness all the days of our lives.
the Lord said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. slight man, bald-headed, lying there for many months, very ill. Some reason, somehow, he just couldn't let himself go. In fact, I still see in my mind's eye on his arms little black bows where the bones were coming through. He couldn't have weighed more than, I don't know, 65, 70 pounds. <clears throat> and so as a young priest, I uh, thought I'd do my duty. So I went in there and I started very glibly talking about the, Christ, the cross of Christ and how Christ suffered, how he died, uh, how he gave himself for us. And that old man, he looked at me, fat young priest, about 40 pounds heavier than I am now. And he looked at me and he said, Father, I've been lying here for about three years. Jesus was on the cross for three hours. Maybe six if you use Mark's version of the gospel. He said, I'd gladly suffer through three hours or six hours and get this all over with. <clears throat> and I'll never forget how he said that. And of course it struck me <laughs> And it remains with me to this day. But of course, what occurred to me then, and hopefully ever more clearly and deeply as my life progressed, was that the difference between Jesus Christ and Steve was that Christ was God. And Steve was a man. And that the teaching is that because Christ experienced the mocking, the scourging, the beating, the reviling, the cross, the crucifixion, the spear, the death, that in those three hours or however many it was on that Friday, the Son of God in human flesh suffered incomparably more than all of the suffering of creatures from the foundation of the world. 
because it was God who was suffering. And then I remember Steve also said something else. He said, and you know, he was God. I'm just Steve. And I think he meant by saying that, that this was nothing for him. He was God. You know, God. What could it mean for him? But you learn that later on, his suffering was exactly incomparably more because he was God. Because he was God. Because he was experiencing all the wages of sin and death and suffering and madness and craziness and injustice uh, of the whole of humanity and all creatures from the foundation of the world in his body on that cross. And with our limited human minds in this fallen world, we can't even begin to comprehend what it would be for the Son of God to be abandoned by his Father, to be left by all his disciples, to be hanging there alone with only his mother and John standing there, we can't even begin to imagine what that was. But that's the center of our faith. It was God who died in human flesh. Later on, still in Warren, Ohio, <laughs> there was another woman dying. Her name was Catherine. Catherine Augusta. She had cancer. She was only 38 years old. She had three uh, young daughters, and uh, she suffered tremendously. I would just, I kind of learned my lesson a little bit, and I read psalms to her rather than glibly chatting <laughs> about Christ. <laughs> uh, and I remember how she used to say, read that part again, Father, read that part again, you know. About how I'm lying here and my bones are sticking to me, and you know, where are you, and all this. Uh, but one, uh, one night, uh, when I came home, I was uh, studying in Pittsburgh at the time, a day a week. came home, it was after 11 at night, and there was a, a note on the table, I know my wife wrote it, said, uh, Kay, Catherine, called and said, no matter what time you get home, she wants you to come in to see her tonight. <clears throat> so I thought, oh, you know, what's this? So I got back in the car, went over to the hospital, it was only 10 minutes away. And I came in, she says, is that your father? I said, yeah. And I said, what is it? And she said to me, I just want you to know something. She said, you know, when we were praying and I had remission earlier, we were so happy, and you were so happy, everybody. But now, there's no remission. And she said to me, I just want you to know, it's not your fault. <laughs> It's not your fault. <laughs> I'm a good one. She said, God knows what he's doing. And he knows what he has to do. And she said, I, I didn't know, you know, when I'm going to leave this life, so I just had to tell you. I couldn't fall asleep or even try to sleep uh, unless I told you that today. And then she came home on uh, Lazarus Saturday the night before. I was in church, her daughters were there, teenage kids, one was younger even. And uh, they came from her house and said, Father, the hour has come, you better come right now. So I took the three girls in the car, drove over to their house, which was also 10 minutes away. And I was talking to the girls about their mom going to be with the Lord. I remember a little, a little one, uh, said to me, is she going to rise up like Lazarus? I said, yeah, in good time. But now we have to let her go. But what happened was, we came into the house, there were people all around her bed, and she was sitting up in bed. And she asked for something to eat. And then her family was around, and others, and she said to us all, you have to believe you have to believe. This is the will of God. And then she told her kids, be sure to take a bath, you know, tomorrow Sunday. Actually, the next day was uh, actually uh, Saturday. But I went there uh, on Palm Sunday morning, before the Regina gave her Holy Communion, 
She actually received it standing up by her bed. And then uh, I said goodbye, went to church. And uh, that night she uh, had a went back into her her, her suffering. And um, she died on Great Friday. During the reading of the royal hours, I never wear a wristwatch in church, but that day I had my watch on for some reason because we had had a funeral before the service to bury uh, a man who died before the Holy Pascha was celebrated. And someone came in and said, Father Tom, you have to go to the hospital now. The end is here. So I looked. I said, well, I'll read the gospel first, I said to myself. So I read the gospel about, and he gave up his spirit. I looked at my wristwatch, what time it was. I told our reader, church reader, to keep on reading until I got back, <laughs> you know, uh, those hours. And when I came there, she had, was already gone. The, uh, her funeral was uh, on Bright Monday. We did the Paschal Vespers in church with her body there on Easter afternoon. And the funeral was <coughs> unforgettable. <coughs> to this day, unforgettable. And when we were leaving Warren after a few years, her family gave me this cross that I wear. I still have it. They paid five dollars for it at St. Ethan's. That's how prices were in those days. You know, be a hundred, two hundred dollars, I don't know. Hand carved, mount apples. You know. I've been wearing it ever since. But there's one more event that I have to tell today. Again, I had to go to the hospital. This time it was much later. I was at the seminary already. And again, a woman was dying of uh, bone cancer. And, um, um, I went to see her. And I came in, and I don't know, again, you know, blah, blah, and all that, what I do, and say something, and perhaps I was tired or traumatized by her suffering or whatever. But she, uh, as I was carrying on, and I came in, she looked at me and she said, Father Tom, just go home. Just go home. Go back. Uh, now, I said, you want me to leave? And she said, yeah, I want you to leave. I said, can I read a song, a prayer? No, 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 just leave, she said, just leave. Her name was Felina, actually. Gay, Austin. And um, so I went back to the seminary. It was vesper time. I walked up the steps of the chapel. There was a woman standing on the porch of the chapel. Very wonderful woman. And uh, she said to me, Father Tom, you look terrible. What happened? Something happened? I said, yeah, I just got thrown out of the hospital room. <laughs> I was told to go home, you know. And so I was going into Vespers, and this woman, Seraphima, her church name was, uh, she said to me, she, she, I could see she took all her courage in her hands, and she looked me right in the eye, and she said to me, you know why, don't you? I said, uh, well, no. I said, if you know, tell me. You know? And she said to me this, she said, because when you go to the hospital and see people and pray, you, you, you bring God there. You bring the Lord, you bring grace, you bring hope. But for some reason today, God wasn't with you. It was just Father Tom. She doesn't need Father Tom. She needs God. And then this woman said to me, can I tell you something else? I thought, well, you're on a roll. <laughs> and, uh, stuck my hand in my pocket and grabbed my my little prayer rope. <laughs> and uh, she said to me, you know, you do that uh, other times too. 
said, there's times when you serve and when you preach and pray. She said, I'll just speak for myself. I know God is there. But sometimes it's just Father Tom. And then she said to me, nobody needs Father Tom. People need God. They need what you bring, the crucified Christ, the hope of everlasting life, the comfort of our salvation, that that God died on the cross in a suffering we can't even imagine. And that's what people need from the priest. And that's what we all need from each other, to bring God to one another. Finally, when the end of this uh, wonderful woman came and I believe that cancer saved her life, actually. She was pretty awful before she got cancer. <laughs> really awful. She admits it herself. Um, but I was there in the room, and it was her last moments. And uh, breathing heavenly, those who know that experience. And um, those who know me know I'm a rather hard-hearted person. I don't cry easily. I worry about that, because the Holy Father said you can't go to heaven unless you can weep. I'm very scared that I ain't going to go. <laughs> but what happened was, I was standing there and grieving. Her husband and kids were there, young kids. And I started to cry. Like, I really cried. I was surprised myself at what had come over me. And after I finished, <laughs> She died. And her husband said to me, Father Tom, I think she was waiting for you to weep. And she couldn't go on till you did. That's what he told me. And so that cross is still in the middle of the church. Remember Steve and Catherine and Gay, Galina, and all those. The first nine months I was in that parish, I had 11 funerals. The oldest person was in their 50s. And a funny other story happened. I went back to that church 18 years later on a Sunday. The first time I'd been back on a Sunday. And a woman came to me at the coffee hour and she said, hey, Father Tom, do you remember when you came here? So many people repose in the Lord. They, they, they left us with the old ladies were saying, oh, what did the new priest bring here, you know? And uh, I said, oh, yeah, I remember. She said, my sister died, and Sam died, and Steve died, and Mary Lux died, and Dan died, died, died. You know, she went through the list there. <laughs> and it was a funny thing, because the next day I went back to Kentucky, where I was with our son Johnny at the time, teaching in school there. And I got a call the next day. It was from her niece. She said, last night, my Aunt Anna died. Well, we all die. But we can't die anymore. Because Christ has to death with himself. And it's been transformed into the victory, which is our faith. So every time we stand before that cross, that's what we know. That's what we know. And God has his ways only when we surrender to them do we understand. And I just read the other day on the internet, somebody sent me a story. This will be the last story. And, it, and, and the story was that a man in Russia was standing in a museum where there were holy icons. Perhaps even the Vladimir Mother of God in, in Moscow uh, Museum. If you remember it. And he was looking at the, the icons or whatever was there, cross perhaps. And he, and he just sort of said out loud, that's a very beautiful artwork. I mean, it's really gorgeous. And those artists are so talented. He said, but I don't see anything more in that than any great art. It's wood, it's a painting, and it's marvelous. And again, a woman standing next to him heard what he said. And she said to him, if you want to understand what that's about, you can't stand there. You have to stand on your knees and bow down. And then you'll understand what it is. And that is the truth. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well,
Let us say with all our soul, with all our mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray that you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Archbishop Nathaniel, for the priests and the deacons, for the monks and the nuns, for our brothers and our sisters in Christ. <laughs> Again, we pray for this country, for its president, those in civil authority, and its armed forces, and for all suffering people throughout the entire world, for all the victims of injustice, persecution, oppression, terror tortures, calamities, hunger, and war, for those who are suffering, and for those in the Ukraine, and for peace to that land, those who are suffering in Egypt, in Syria, throughout the Middle East, those who are being held in captivity, we pray for their deliverance and for their salvation. <laughs> Mother Christophora, for the sisterhood of this monastery, for their health, and for their salvation. <laughs> Again we pray for the servants of God departed this life before us, for the newly departed, ever memorable Metropolitan Philip. For Alexander, Martha, Lucia, Ina, John, Yaroslav, Mary, and Sophie. For all of our fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, children who hear and in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness of sins. For the servants of God, the sick and the suffering brothers and sisters, Archimandric Roman, Archpriest Alexander, Archpriest Paul, Archpriest Andrew, the priest Lawrence, the priest John, the Desbiteta Janus, Matushka Stephanie, Teresa Alexander, the infant Yelena, Pano, Joel, Vichyslav, Rosemary, for Cody, Debbie, Suzanne, Phil, and James, for all suffering people, especially those who are suffering in the great landslide in the state of Washington yesterday, and all those who perish. We pray <clears throat> for all those who have asked us, unworthy though we be, to pray for them and for their salvation. And we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this monastery and in all of God's holy churches, for all those who labor and who work, for those who serve, for those who sing, and for the people present here who await your great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, our God, accept this fervent supplication of your servants, and mercy on us according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Send down your bounties upon us, upon all of your people who await the rich mercy that comes from you. For you are a merciful God, and you love mankind. And to you we send up glory, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Let us the faithful pray for the catechumens. Let us pray that the Lord may have mercy on them.
all your servants, the catechumens, especially those who are preparing to enter into the communion of, church, of the church during this Lenten season. Look on also on the newborn infants, Joseph and Dionysia, being prepared for holy baptism. <coughs> Grant them a light yoke. Make them honorable members of your holy church. Make, make them worthy of the ladder of regeneration and the remission of their sins and the robe of incorruption. For the knowledge of you, our only true God, that with us they may glorify your all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us the faithful again and again in peace pray unto the Lord. of salvation, you have counted us worthy, your humble and unworthy servants, to be ministers at your holy altar, by the power of your Holy Spirit, count us worthy also to perform this service, so that standing blamelessly before your holy glory, we may offer you a sacrifice of praise, for you alone accomplishes all things in all people, may our sacrifice be acceptable and well-pleasing in your sight, Lord, for our sins and for the errors of all of your people. For to you are to all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us, the faithful, again and again in peace, pray unto the Lord. Amen. O God, who in mercy and compassion has visited our lowliness, who has sent us your humble and sinful and unworthy servants, to serve at your holy altar before your holy glory. By the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen us for this service and grant speech to our lips so that we may call down the grace of your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that are about to be offered. That guarded always by your might, we may send up glory to you, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever into the ages of ages. No one who is bound with the desire of the pleasures of the flesh is worthy to approach it on here to serve the King of glory. For to serve you is great and awesome even to the heavenly powers. Thank you. 
do to sinners will be converted to you. Deliver me from the dumbness and the silence of sin, O God, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. Open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise, for if you have desired sacrifice, I am able to give them to you. With burnt offerings, you will not be pleased. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, and a trite, and a humble heart of God, you will not despise. Beatitude Tikhon, Archbishop of Washington, the Metropolitan of the United States and Canada, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen, his eminence Nathaniel, Archbishop of Detroit, and of the Romanian Orthodox Episcopate in America. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. The entire Episcopate of the Church the priests and the deacons, the monks and the nuns, this monastery, <clears throat> its abbess Mother Christophora, his sisterhood and his friends and benefactors, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. This country is president, those in civil authority, its armed forces, and all suffering people throughout the whole world. May the Lord God remember them in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. The sick and the suffering brothers and sisters, all who have asked us, I worthy though we be to pray for them. May the Lord God remember them in his kingdom always, now and forever, to the ages of ages, amen. The servants of God departed this life before us, especially the ever memorable Metropolitan Philip. May the Lord God remember him in his kingdom with all those departed this life, always, now and forever, and to ages of ages, amen. And you, and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen.
accept the sacrifice of justice, oblations, whole burnt offerings, then will they offer young bullocks upon your altar. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. For the precious gifts now offered, let us pray to the Lord. For this only God and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. And help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Let this whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. And the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful God, a guardian of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. And the Lord. Pardon the of our sins and transgressions. Let us ask of the Lord. And the Lord. All things are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world. Let us ask of the Lord. And the Lord. Let me make a plea the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance. Let us ask of the Lord, a Christian ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and for a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask of the Lord, commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady, say, O Lord, was the ever virgin Mary, of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other. And all our life to Christ our God. To thee, o, Lord. o Lord our God, you have created us. You have brought us into this life. You have shown to us the ways to salvation. You have bestowed on us the revelation of heavenly mysteries. You are the one who has appointed us to this service in the power of your Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, count us worthy to be ministers of your new covenant servants of your holy mysteries. Through the greatness and mercy, accept us as we draw near to your holy altar, so that we may be worthy to offer to you this reasonable and spiritual and bloodless sacrifice for our sins and for the errors and ignorances of all of your people. Having received it upon your holy, heavenly, and ideal altar above the heavens as a sweet spiritual fragrance, send down upon us and return the grace of your own Holy Spirit. Look upon us, God. Behold, this our service. Receive it, as you receive the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the whole burnt offerings of Abraham, the priestly offices of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel. Even as you receive from your holy apostles this true worship, so now in your goodness, accept these gifts from the hands of us sinners. For you, Lord, O oh Lord, having been, uh, having been accounted worthy, to serve you without scandal, without offense, at your holy altar. May we receive the reward of wise and faithful stewards on that awesome and dreadful day of your just retribution. Through the compassions of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, now and ever and through the ages of ages. Peace be unto all. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may confess. Let us attend. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. 
judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand aright, let us stand with fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. We sinners also cry aloud and we say, You are holy, 
truly most holy, and there are no bounds to the magnificence of your holiness. You are gracious in all of your deeds, for with righteousness and true judgment you have ordered all things for us. When you created human beings by taking dust from the earth and dishonored them with your own image and likeness, O God, you did not set them in a paradise of delight, but promising, but promising eternal life and the enjoyment of everlasting blessings in the observance of your commandments. But when man disobeyed you, the true God who had created him, and was deceived by the guile of the serpent, becoming subject to death through his own transgressions, you, O God, in your righteous judgment, sent him forth from paradise into this world, returning him to the earth from which he was taken, yet providing for him the salvation of regeneration in your Christ himself. For you did not turn yourself away for, forever from your creatures whom you had made, O good one, nor did you forget the works of your hands. Through the tender compassion of your mercy, you visited him in various ways. You sent prophets. You performed mighty works by your saints, who in every generation were well-pleasing to you. You spoke to us by the mouth of your servants, the prophets, foretelling to us the salvation which was to come. You gave us the law as a help. You appointed angels as guardians. And when the fullness of time had come, you spoke to us through your Son himself, by whom you also have created the ages. Your Son, who being the radiance of your glory and the exact image of your divine person, upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to you, the God and Father. He was God before the ages, Yet he appeared on earth and lived among men, becoming incarnate of a holy virgin. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being likened to the body of our lowliness, that he might liken us to the image of his divine glory. For as by man sin entered into this world, and by sin death, and so it pleased you, your only begotten Son, who was in the bosom of you, the God and Father, who was born of a woman, the Holy Theotokos, the ever-Virgin Mary, who was born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who were dead in Adam might be made alive in your Christ himself. He lived in this world, and he gave us commandments of salvation, releasing us from the delusions of idolatry. He brought us to the knowledge of you, the true God and Father. He obtained us for his own chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, having cleansed us in water and sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death, in which we were all held captive, sold under sin, and descending through the cross into Hades, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the pangs of death. He arose on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible for the author of life to be a victim of corruption. So he himself became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might be himself truly the first in all things. And ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of your majesty on high, and he will come <coughs> to render to every person according to his works. And as memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things, which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary and ever-memorable and life-creating death, in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and pure hands, and having shown it to you, the God and Father, having given thanks, blessed, hallowed it, and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. And likewise, he took the, the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it with water, and given thanks and blessed and hallowed it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you, 
This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, he said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, you confess my resurrection. Therefore we also, Master, remembering his saving passion and his life-creating cross, his rebate, burial, and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven and sitting at your right hand of the God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. <clears throat> Offering to you your own of your own in behalf of all and for all. We praise you, we bless you, we heal you, we sing for you, we thank you, and again we pray out to you, O oh Lord. Be merciful to me, sinner. O oh God, be merciful to me, sinner. God, cleanse me, sinner.
Those who remember the poor, reward them with your rich and heavenly gifts, and for their earthly, temporal, and corruptible gifts, do you grant them heavenly gifts, eternal and incorruptible. Remember, Lord, those who are in the deserts, mountains, caverns, pits of the earth. Remember, Lord, those who live in chastity and godliness and austerity and holiness of life. Remember, Lord, this country, its president, those in civil authority. Grant them a secure and lasting peace. Speak good things into their hearts concerning your church and all of your people. That we, in their tranquility, may lead a calm and a peaceful life in all godliness and sanctity. And remember, Lord, every principality, authority, our brothers and our sisters who serve in the government and in the armed forces. Preserve the good in goodness and make the evil be good by your goodness. Remember, Lord, the people here present and also those who are absent for honorable reasons. Have mercy on them and on us according to the multitude of your mercies. Fill their treasuries with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Raise the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, reunite the separated, lead back those who are in error, and join them to your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Free those who are held captive by unclean spirits. Sail with those who are sailing by sea and in the air. Journey with those who travel by land. Defend the widows. Protect the orphans. Free the captives. Heal the sick. Remember God those who are in courts, in mines, in exile, in harsh labor, and those in any kind of affliction, necessary, necessity, or distress. And remember, Lord our God, all of those who beg your great loving kindness, those who love us, those who hate us, those who have asked us to pray for them, unworthy though we be. Remember all of your people, O oh God. Pour out your rich mercies upon all of them, granting them all the petitions which are for their salvation. And remember yourself, O God, all those whom we have not remembered, through ignorance, forgetfulness, or the multitude of names, since you know the name and the age of each person, even from his mother's womb. For you, Lord, are the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the restored, the haven of the voyager, the physician of the sick. Be all things to all people, you who know each person, his request, his home, and his need. Deliver, O Lord, this monastery, this city, and every city and country from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, invasion by enemies, and civil war. And among the first, <clears throat> remember, Lord, our Archbishop Nathaniel, whom do you grant to your holy church in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, that he may rightly define the word of your truth. Remember, <clears throat> Remember, Lord, all the Orthodox bishops who rightly define the word of your truth. Remember, Lord, my <clears throat> unworthiness also. And by the multitude of your compassions, forgive my every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. And because of my sins, do not withhold the grace of your Holy Spirit from these gifts here set forth. Remember, Lord, the priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, every order of the clergy, that none of us who stand about your holy altar be put to shame or to confusion. Visit us with your loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest yourself to us through your rich compassions. Grant us seasonable and helpful weather. Send gentle showers upon the earth that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness. Prevent schisms among the churches. Pacify the regions of the pagans. Quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies by the power of of your Holy Spirit, and receive us all into your kingdom, showing us all to be sons of the light and sons of the day. Grant us your peace and your love, O Lord our God, <clears throat> for you have given all things unto us. And grant that with one mouth and one heart we may praise your all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all of the saints again and again in peace, let us pray unto the Lord. For the precious gifts now offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our God who loves mankind, receiving them upon his holy heavenly. 
ideal altar, as a sweet spiritual fragrance, will set down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, deliver us from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Let us be in the perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, O Lord. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, O Lord. The garden of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, O Lord. The remission of our sins and transgressions. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant it, O Lord. All things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world. Let us ask of the Lord. Let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance. Let us ask of the Lord. Let us ask of the Lord. ending to our life, painless, blameless, and peaceful, and for a good defense before the fearful judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask of the Lord. Let us ask of the Lord. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life through Christ our God. To thee, o Lord. We commend our whole life to you and our hope, O Master, the lover of mankind. And we ask you and pray you and supplicate you. Make us worthy to partake of the heavenly and awesome mysteries of this sacred and spiritual table with a pure conscience, for remission of sins, for forgiveness of transgressions, for the communion of the Holy Spirit, for the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness toward you, but not for judgment or for condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, <clears throat> that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call on you the heavenly God as Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Peace be unto all. Bow your hands to the Lord. Master, Lord, Father of compassion, and God of every consolation, Bless, sanctify, guard, strengthen, and confirm those who have now bowed their heads to you. Withdraw them from every evil deed. Apply them to every good work. And make them worthy to partake without condemnation of these, your most pure and life-creating mysteries, for the remission of sins and for the communion of the Holy Spirit. Through the grace... <coughs> and compassion and love for mankind, of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Attend, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from your holy dwelling place and from the throne of the glory of your kingdom, come to sanctify us. You sit on high with the Father, you are here invisibly present with us, and by your mighty hand impart to us your most pure body, your most precious blood, and through us to all of the people. O oh God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy on me. O oh God, cleanse thou me a sinner and have mercy on me. God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy on me. <coughs> Let us attend. <coughs> The holy things are for the holy.
and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is in our midst. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that Thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. And I believe also that this is truly Thy own most pure body, and that this is truly Thy own precious blood. Therefore I pray Thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and of deed, committed in knowledge or ignorance, and make me worthy to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins, and of the life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, accepting today as a communicant, I will not speak of thy mystery to thy enemies, neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess to you. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be neither to my judgment nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. In the fear of God, and with faith and with love, draw near. Our sin is deep and lost in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord, and has revealed himself to us. The precious God, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, is in the heaven of God.
God and none, Mother Elizabeth, forgive us of her sins. Give us Glory to the Lord. 
I'm sorry, God, God, I thank you, Lord, my God, for that I was not rejected by a sinner, but has made me worthy to be a partaker of thy holy things. I thank thee for that I was in me, and I'm worthy to be in thy most pure and heavenly gifts. But O Master, who loves mankind, so for our sakes, to die and rise again. Gave us a mercy washed in light of green mysteries, good in sanctification of our souls and bodies. Let the beam for the healing of soul and body be filling every atmosphere. Give them in the eyes of my heart, the peace of my spirit, the power of faith and a shame, love unfeigned, fulfilling of wisdom, serving of thy commandments, receiving of thy divine grace, and maintaining of thy kingdom. Preserved by them in thy holiness, sure, may I always remember thy grace, and not for myself alone, but for the our master, benefactor. May I pass from this life and the hope of eternal life, the servant of God's to attain to everlasting rest, the voice of those who feast in my ceasing, the gladness of those who behold the unspeakable beauty of my chance, the truth is unending, but thou art the true desire and the ineffable joy of those who love thee. Christ, our life everlasting. Especially to wash away your sins. Virgil, your iniquities. Dios, especially to wash away your sins. Virgil, your iniquities. Arise and shine the new Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And you, Theotokos, be exceedingly glad in the resurrection of the Son, whom you have borne. O Pascha of the Lord, O Passover, great and holy, O wisdom, word, and power of God, Jesus Christ, how just worthy to partake more perfectly and more truly in the never-ending day of your kingdom. And wash away, O Lord, the sins of all of those who are remembered here by your most precious blood, through the prayers of the Holy Theotokos and of all of the saints. And bless your inheritance. We are seeing God, we are seeing God, we are receiving God, we are receiving God, we are calling God, we are worshiping the undivided Trinity, who has saved us. Thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. And may our glory be over all of the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. of wisdom, 
the healing of soul and body, the rebellion of every adversary, the observing of your commandments, and an acceptable defense at the dread judgment seat of your Christ. For you are our sanctification, and to you we send the glory, to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. give the good fruit of righteousness in all of their works, give them might and power for the destruction of sin and for the renewal of soul and mind, so that during the forty days of the fast we may overcome the enemy's clever manipulations. For you are our God, who through fasting and discipline made mortals equal to angels and entrusted the fasting Moses with the tablets of the law written by your divine hand. And now, O Lord, return us to the safe harbor of the holy passion of your Christ, that we may conquer sin with the wood of the cross as our only weapon, and become worthy of the joyous resurrection on the third day. Through the prayers and supplications of the all-holy, pure Mother of God and ever-Virgin Mary, and of all of your saints, now and always, and now to ages of ages.
but today we uh, venerate the cross to some the understanding, so I won't open it. Thank Father Thomas for serving and uh, for his words and reminder of those people's lives. Uh, again, we're happy all of you are with us. I would like to invite that the teenagers stay with me in church after everyone else dismisses. Uh, I want to speak a little bit, bit with you and show you a few of the treasures at the monastery. And, um, then after we have some to eat, I'll meet with the younger children. They were very good, very good. I, I know we have to not eat cream during Lent. You know, it's one of those things, butter, cream, everything fat and rich, but our spiritual life is so rich during Lent. That's why if we ate it, besides, we wouldn't be able to cope. So you bring the cream of the crop to the monastery, and I'm very full. <laughs> very nice, good cream this morning. Beautiful, beautiful, everyone. everyone. So, um, when you venerate the cross, the large wooden cross was carved actually by one of the nuns here at the monastery. And underneath is a small metal cross in the middle, a white, white ribbon in the middle of the white ribbon, a fragment, tiny fragment of the true precious cross of Christ. Just wanted to tell you that. Uh, we'll read the prayers thanking God for Holy Communion, and I'll invite all of you to come forward while we're reading those prayers to venerate the cross. And um, as I say, then we'll have coffee hour together. And don't wait for me, sisters, uh, just uh, to be there for the prayer because I'll be in church with the teens. We'll, so the older, all the old people can go have their coffee. The young kids can have their breakfast. I'll be here with the teens, and then we'll come and join you a, a little bit later. Master Christ, our God, keep the teenagers, maker of all things. I thank you for all the good things thou hast given me, especially for the communion with thy most pure of life, creating the shade. I pray for your gracious love, for man, preserve the end of thy protection beneath the shadow of thy wings. Enable me even to my last breath to partake worthily with the pure conscience of thy holy things, for the remission of sins and unto life eternal. For thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of all good, and to thee we ascribe glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Really, thou hast given me thy body for my food, and thou art a fire consuming the unworthy. Consume me not in my creator, but instead enter into my members, my veins, my heart. Consume the thorns of my transgressions, cleanse my soul, and sanctify my reasonings. Make firm my knees and body. You live with my five senses, now me to the fear of thee. Always protect, guard, and keep me from soul-destroying words and deeds. Cleanse me, purify me, and adore me, give me understanding and illumination. Show me to be a temple of the one spirit, and not the home of many sins. May every evil thing, every carnal passion, flee from me as from a fire, so become my tabernacle through communion. I offer thee, as intercessors, all the saints, the leaders of the body of this host, thy former, and the wise apostles, and thy third blameless mother. Accept their prayers and my love of my Christ, and may be thy servant and child in life. For thou art the only sanctification of life of our souls, O good one, and to thee our master, God, we strive for thee day by day. O Lord Jesus 